Okay, we're going to uh, go through and play it a second time. Uh, we're gonna stop uh, at a couple of points uh, along the way, uh, just to clarify a couple of things if I could. I know that that moved along uh, pretty rapidly. Um, if we can go ahead and start playing it again, we'll stop uh, at, at about 56 seconds. I'll, I'll take it. Here, please. No, go ahead, just to be. I'm sorry. Stop right there. All right. Uh, obviously, you can see the, the the fire truck back behind here. The they had responded to the scene and had already gone back to. At this point, had walked back to because they were going to be leaving. Uh, they they weren't needed uh, at the scene any longer. They figured out they didn't have a fire issue or they were going to be um, pulling out of the area. So they're back in their. Uh, fire truck there. Over here on the left side of the screen, you see the three officers standing there. On the left is Officer Jake Walleen. In the middle, with the vest on, is uh, Officer Tyler Hawes. And on the right is Officer Andrew Dotis. It's about 15 feet uh, from there, from where they're standing to where Barakat is in his vehicle. He is seated in the uh, driver's side of the vehicle. Uh, his window's open and his arm is kind of less resting, on the, uh, uh, resting on the door frame at that point. Um, we're not today releasing the uh, images from the other officer's uh, body cams. Um, Couple of quick things. Dotus is hit immediately with multiple rounds and goes down. He does struggle to his feet at one point and goes back down. Officer Hawes is struck immediately too in the in initial like automatic burst. Neither of them sees it coming. You heard Robinson yell up to Dotus. He was gonna communicate something to him because Robinson's gonna move his police cruiser, once that, once that fire truck leaves, Robinson was gonna move his police cruiser up so that it was behind the vehicle and they didn't have another car crash out there. So he called to Dotus, they turned to him and they're looking out at Robinson and that's when Burakot comes up, reaches over in his seat, comes up with the, the gun out the, out the window and starts shooting immediately. Because Jake Walleen, Officer Jake Walleen is on the left there, Barricott picks left and is gonna come across. Walleen, in an instant, somehow manages to make a couple of running steps closer to the vehicle, but at an angle, at an angle, kind of getting himself into a better angle. He does unholster his weapon. He does get off one round just before he is about to get his hand back, uh, his left hand to steady the weapon further, he is struck by a single round from Barakat's 223. Again, this all happens very rapidly on here. Um, there are things that we were only able to see when we went frame to frame to frame to frame. But from Robinson's video here, you, see, you do see the, the shooting start and uh, and uh, also, I should mention Carly Kosick. She is shot after them. She goes, she first takes the ground, goes to the ground as anybody would in that circumstance. 
when Robinson's behind the vehicle calling in for protocol, he's got to get that call in. Because as we said at a previous press conference, of course, he doesn't know how many shooters are out there. He doesn't know what's coming next. He's got to get people coming in. Carly got up at some point and tried to run, which drew Barakat's attention for just a moment after he'd already engaged Robinson. It drew his attention for just a moment. He shoots her. And that's when Robinson, in his first volley back, I think it's his first volley back, is when he takes out the weapon, strikes the 223, and also is where he hits Barakat for the first time, and then Barakat goes down to the ground. Okay. Central, we got shots fired. Central, we got shots fired. Central, we got a man with an AK-47. He's shooting at us. We're at... Central, shots fired, shots fired. We got three officers down. Three officers down. Send everybody. Stop. Okay. Robinson has just made the call in to send everybody. Beyond this, this is where you can hear the sirens start coming because the, the response is very rapid. The officer that you saw come into the frame at the very end after Barakat has been neutralized, that's Officer Clower, who, has, who had about a week or two left, 12 days left in his, uh, in his service uh, to the city of Fargo and to the region. And uh, he was the first to get there and had his weapon out when he came up there and he uh, is retired uh, in, in the wake of that. But he was scheduled to retire and had that time frame left. So anyway, I want to point out that it's at this point that uh, uh, Robinson commands uh, Barakat twice to put his hands up. That's where Barakat is seen fumbling with his 223, trying to get that back up while he's laying on the ground. And uh, six times Robinson commands him to drop the gun. Uh, the gun that he sees after he can't get the 223 up, the uh, Barakat pulls out what later sh is shown to be a nine millimeter uh, loaded uh, semi-automatic handgun. He had another semi-automatic on him as well, but it's the nine millimeter that he got into his hands. Um, that uh, non-compliance persisted uh, with the gun and Officer Robinson shot him three times at that point. Understandably, as you go through this, it would be understandable to anybody the number of rounds that Officer Robinson is able to put into Barakat, and Barakat persists. I, I think any reasonable conclusion would be he's wearing body armor of some kind, he's got a bulletproof, but something that he's persisting on, because at that point, Robinson's moving in, and he knows, I'm sure knew, that he was connecting with those. The best information that we have uh, to anticipate the question is that of the 31 rounds that Officer Robinson shot, 21 rounds struck Barakat. Okay, let's continue on. Stop moving! Stop moving! Put your hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Fargo 534, three officers down. things you saw there you saw robinson have to reload his his uh service weapon he has they have 17 rounds in them 18 the typical protocol is to put it put put a live round into the chamber and then re you know fully stock your uh your magazine he gave it, that, at this point he gives six more commands to drop your gun you see barakat with the nine millimeter anyone who's familiar with semi-automatic weapons he's trying to he's trying to chamber around He's trying, he's got his hand on the top, but he's trying to chamber a round uh, into his nine millimeter. As I said, it was loaded. As it turns out, I think that there already was a round uh, in, his, in his chamber, but uh, uh, still very much, as we say, 
uh, in the fight. Interestingly, Officer Robinson, every time, obviously, he is going to communicate back. He steps out of the line, what would be the line of fire with Barakat to use the car as a buffer, and then he steps back into the frame uh, e each time after beyond that. Continue. <laughs> stop it again. At that point, you can see Barakat still has the gun. He's reaching for it again with his left hand. It was being held in his right. Um, Officer Robinson um, at that point neutralizes him with five rounds. Um, this is, uh, I went through and looked at the calculation. It's a, it's a minute and 46 seconds. One minute, 46 seconds between the first um, barrage from Barakat's to 23 to the neutralization of Burkhardt by Officer Robinson. This is not television, of course, so anybody who you've ever talked to who's been in a firefight uh, of this kind will tell you a minute and 46 seconds is a lifetime. That is a very long uh, 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 turn of events. And uh, as you see it play out, never lose track of the fact that Right there next to that, in that vehicle, you don't see them in this video, but beyond that are several civilians standing just beyond that that are in the line of fire underneath that vehicle, uh, in addition to uh, the officers who are there uh, on the scene. As I said, we'll take your questions, of course, when we get to the end of this. Uh, and with that, I turn it over to Chief Zabolski. Thank you, sir. Uh, appreciate all the assistance of your office. and. Uh, Again, thanks to the North Dakota Bureau of Criminal Investigation, Director Grabowska, his team, uh, a lot of our uh, 